G'day everyone, it's Courtesy and welcome to an On The Back Wheel video. Today, I'm gonna to do my top five adventure bikes of 2023. I'm gonna split them up into five different categories. We're gonna have budget, lightweight, middleweight, mid to large capacity, and big ball. Now, I'm not going to get into a big philosophical debate over what constitutes an adventure bike. I mean, an adventure bike is whatever you are riding, right? But for this video, an adventure bike is a bike designed to be ridden both on and off road over reasonably large distances. Hey, before we get into it, make sure you click that subscribe button. It helps create more content like this. All right, let's start off with the budget category. This is an easy pick for me. It is the Honda CRF 300 Rally. Starting at approximately $10,400 right away in Australia, you're getting an absolutely bulletproof motorcycle that you could really ride around the world and not worry about any reliability issues. The engine is a 286cc single cylinder with a six speed transmission. Ground clearance is fantastic at 275 millimeters. Suspension travel is generous. It has a decent screen for wind protection, plus the weight is very manageable at 152 kilograms, fully fueled up. It isn't perfect though. The suspension is non-adjustable and will need upgrading if you're doing some serious riding. Thankfully, there are some well-priced options to fix this. A bit more horsepower would definitely be appreciated. You can put a pipe and tune on it, that really helps, but you can't have it all at this price. Other than that, with some minor mods, the 300 Rally is pretty well adventure ready. Next up is the lightweight class, and I have chosen three bikes that are exactly the same bikes. These are the KTM 690 Enduro, Husqvarna 701, and Gas Gas ES700. Now, if you wanna go super lightweight, there are some other options, but they don't mix power and specs like the KTM Trio do. The motor is an absolute monster. It's a 692cc single, putting out 74 horsepower while still maintaining a 10,000 kilometer service interval. That's ridiculous. The suspension is fully adjustable, WP Explore by front and rear with 250 millimeters of travel. Grand clearance is generous at 269 millimeters and weight is kept very respectable at 146 kilograms. The only things holding these three back is a relatively small fuel capacity and a lack of wind protection. The fuel capacity issues can be alleviated by adding a RAID auxiliary fuel tank or carrying a fuel bladder. You can add a basic screen or if you're really keen, several brands do rally towers that look absolutely trick. So while the 690 range is technically a dual sport, boy does it make a mean adventure bike when it's set up. Now, perhaps the most hotly anticipated class at the moment is the middleweight category. A strong argument can be made for the Yamaha Tenere 700, but I have chosen the Aprilia Touareg 660. The Touareg has taken the adventure game to another level. I have one recently for review, and it is a fantastic motorcycle. It has better suspension than the Tenere. The engine is a peach, it has the best handling in the class, and great electronics to match. This is a seriously impressive motorcycle and it is the one I would buy at the moment. It only costs a little bit more than the Tenere 700 and it's cheaper than the KTM 890 and 790. With a set of crash bars, a good set of hand guards and a bash plate, this bike is adventure ready. The mid to large capacity class was a tough choice. In the end, I have chosen the Triumph Tiger 900 Rally Pro over the Honda Africa Twin. The Tiger 900 is an extremely good motorcycle. The engine is quick and versatile. The suspension is top notch and it has all the mod cons. When I reviewed this bike, I was seriously impressed. It is bloody good off-road, but one of the great things about this bike is it can really knock out the miles on road. Wind protection is good. The seat height is adjustable and it does two up quite well. This is just a well-balanced motorcycle and Triumph are really on the money lately. Before we get to the last category, I'm gonna throw in some honorable mentions. First up is one a lot of people haven't heard before, the AJP PR7. This is probably the most ready to ride adventure bike you can buy at the moment. It's basically a rally bike. It's got a 600cc single from SWM, great fuel range, ridiculous suspension travel, and enduro-like ground clearance. The only thing holding it back is a lack of dealers. 
My second honorable mention is an old faithful, the Suzuki DR650. The big DR is pretty basic athlete but it's so simple to fix, easy to mod, and there are a ton of aftermarket parts out there for it. Go DR. Last but not least, we have the big ball class. There are a few different ways you can go with this, depending on the kind of riding you are doing. I have chosen the BMW R1250 GS Adventure. I mean, if you're gonna go big, go big, right? There are six variants of the Adventure, but I just go for the base Adventure. What you're getting on the Beamer is a ton of creature comforts. The legendary flat twin that now pumps out 136 horsepower and a ton of torque. The unique telelever suspension, and there are a gajillion accessories available for the Beamer. The GS is in its element pumping out huge miles both on and off the road. Off-road, I'd stick to more dirt and gravel roads. You can tackle some decent off-road tracks on this, but at 268 kilograms, I'd be looking elsewhere if that was your goal. It also makes for a mean everyday bike, so if you want to commute, this thing is fantastic. This is also a great two-up bike, so if you have a significant other who enjoys going for a big ride, this is one of the top picks at the moment. So there you have it, those are my top five adventure bikes of 2023. What are your picks for each category and do you agree with what I have chosen? Put your top five picks in the comments down below or if you disagree with me, put that as well. Now hit that subscribe button and keep it on the back wheel everyone. Catches.